Welcome to another free Microsoft Access video tutorial brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Rost. In this tutorial, I am going to teach you all the basics of building a Microsoft Access database. We'll start a database from scratch, build a customer table, a query, a form, and a quick report. If you've never worked with Microsoft Access before, this is the perfect place to start. Now, I am working with Microsoft Access 2013, but these steps are pretty much the same regardless of which version of Access you're working with. I like Access 2013, and you can download a free trial version from Microsoft's website. Now, there are a ton of different templates that you can use that Access comes pre-configured with, but I want to teach you how to build your own database so you're not limited by someone else's template. That's what I focus on in my full classes, building your own custom database. Now, in Access 2013, you can build custom web apps which work online or traditional databases that work on your computer or on your local network. We're going to stick with blank desktop database for now. Give your database a file name, like Rick's database, or whatever you want to call it, and click Create. Access creates your database, which is a single file sitting in your Documents folder that's going to contain all the different objects that your database is going to hold. The first object we're going to start out with is called a table. Tables store all the data in your database. You can put all the information in one or more tables. For this simple tutorial, we're just going to stick with one table. Now, tables are organized into different fields. You can think of fields like columns in a spreadsheet. Each field has a specific type of data, like first name, last name, address, and so on. Access starts you off with one field there called an ID. Each record in your database, each row, gets its own ID. It's called an auto number, and it's going to start at 1, and it's going to count up. Now, we're going to add a couple more fields to our table. So I'm going to click right here where it says click to add and pick the type of data you want to store in this field. Short text is less than 255 characters. That's perfect for things like first name, last name, address, and so on. There are also values for numbers, currencies, date, time, yes, no, and lots more. For the first field, let's pick short text. Now it says field 1. We're going to type a name for this field in here. I'm going to type in first name without any spaces. It's a personal preference of mine. I don't like to put spaces in my field names. Now press enter and that creates that field called first name. Now let's add another field. How about short text and let's call it last name. Again, no spaces. You can add pretty much as many different fields as you want. I'll just add a couple more for class. I'll drop this down. Let's go with number. And I'll call this field num children. I want to track the number of children each of my customers has. Maybe I have a kid's clothing store. And you can abbreviate num children or whatever you want. Now let's go with currency. And let's call this credit limit. And one more. How about short text? And let's go with state. The customer's state. I'm not going to bother putting full address in there. Now that we have our table defined, we can start putting information into it, some data into it. For example, I'll come back over here, click on the first row under first name. I'll type in my own name, Rick, tab, Rost, tab, two children, tab. Let's say I have a $5,000 credit limit, tab, and state is New York. And that's it. Move to the next by just simply hitting tab, and it brings you right down to the next row. If you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, you'll find that the data entry works almost the same. And you can resize these columns like so to make them wider or more narrow. I'll put another customer in, Joe Smith, one child, $1,000 credit limit from Pennsylvania. And how about uh, Sue Jones, no kids, $10,000 credit limit, also from New York. So now I have three customers in my customer table. Now, the data is saved in the table whenever you move from record to record. So as soon as I finish entering in record one, it automatically saves in my table. But if you make design changes, adding fields or changing things like that, you want to make sure you save your changes by clicking on the Save button or pressing Control-S on your keyboard. 
Now, since we haven't given our table a name yet, Access wants us to name it. I'm going to call it my customer, T. I like to end all of my tables in the letter T. And there we go. I have my customer T finished. You can see over on the left-hand side, it shows up in my object list. This is called the navigation pane, where you can navigate between the different objects in your database. If you decide to add more tables later on, you'll see them all listed here under tables. Now, tables are great, but you don't necessarily always want to see all of this information. For example, let's say you only want to see customers that are from New York. Well, one way you could do that is to filter this list of results by coming down here and turning off everything but New York. Now I only see the customers from New York. And that's fine for simple things, but later on down the line, you might want to say, okay, I want to see all the customers that have four or more children with credit limits less than $2,000 who are from California. And that's a lot of steps to go through every time you want to see that. That's where queries come in. A query is essentially a set of saved parameters to define what you want to see out of your tables. Now, I'm going to turn this filter off by clicking on the Select All. That will show me all of my customers again. And let's make a query now that does the same thing, that shows me just the customers from New York. So I'm going to close this table. Save design changes, yes, if you've made any. Now let's create a query to go along with our table. So come up top and go to Create, and then Query Design. A blank query comes up. The Show Table window appears. You'll see all the tables in your database. We only have one. You have to add the table or tables that you want to your query. So I'll pick Customer T, click Add. You'll see it appears in the background here. Then I'll click Close. Next, you select the fields that you want to appear in the query when it runs. Let's say I want to see the first name. I'll click on it and then drag it down here and drop it in the first column. Then last name, click and drag. And let's say for this query, I just want to see first name, last name, and the state. So I'll bring state down. You can double click on it too. That's a shortcut. And if I run this query now, here's what I get for results. Come up here on the ribbon and click on run. And there's the results. I see the three customers that are in my database. First name, last name, and state. That's what I defined for my query so far. Now let's go back to design view. Click on that guy. Let's put a criteria on now. See this row down here? This is criteria. Well, find criteria and come straight across underneath state. I'm going to limit my list of customers to only the customers from New York. So inside of quotes, put New York. That's double quotes. That says, show me all the customers, first name, last name, state. Limit them to show me only the customers from New York. Now when I run my query, you can see I've got the same results, but I only have two customers now. The customer from Pennsylvania does not show up. So that's the essence of building a query. And you'll have multiple queries in your database. Again, generally, they'll be more complex than this. You might say, show me all the customers from this state with this credit limit, and so on. And you don't want to have to go through and rebuild that every time you want to see that set of data. That's why queries are so powerful. Now I'm going to save this, control S again, save. Let's call this customers from New York, Q. I like to end all of my queries in a Q. And there's my query. And now if I close the query, I can open up the customer table and see all the records. Or I can quickly rerun that query by just double clicking on it. And there's those results again. So that's what queries are used for. Now, working with data on the screen is okay, but this format is not necessarily very pretty. That's where forms come in. Forms let you work with the data on the screen in a nice, pretty interface. Now, I could spend hours going over good form design, and in my full-length tutorials, I do. There's lots of great tips and tricks and techniques I could show you for building really cool-looking forms. But for now, let's make a real simple one. Create. Click on your table, the customer T, then click on Form. Access will put together a form for you that looks like this. It's much nicer and cleaner for working with the data on the screen. And here you see one customer at a time. You can click on these objects here and resize them if you don't want the first name being that tall or the last name. 
just like that. You can move through the different records in the table by clicking on these navigation buttons down here on the bottom. This is an example from my full access tutorial of the database that we build in class. You can take forms and make menus out of them. Here we have a customer list form that shows all the customers. We can click on a selected customer, open up a full customer form like that. And as you can see, that's nice and pretty, very easy to work with. Over here, we have something embedded inside that form called a subform, which is a list of contacts for that customer. So as you can see, forms make working with the database on the screen much, much easier than just simply looking at rows and columns of data. So that's what a simple customer form looks like. Now, I'm going to save this as my customer F. So control S to save, and then customer F for customer form. Now this little title right here can be whatever you want it to be. That's just simple English, double click on it, and then just change this to customers or customer list or whatever you want to call it. In fact, you can get rid of it completely by hitting delete on your keyboard, which I often do because I don't like those. The title and that little graphic that goes along with it. So that's your customer form. So now we have a table, a query, and a form. And finally, when you want to print information out of your database, you use a report. Reports are generated for printing information. Now, one of the coolest things you can do is you can create mailing labels, which are basically a report, right from your customer data. So click on Create, click on the Customer table, come over here to the right. There's all kinds of different reports you can generate. Let's do simple labels for now. Click on Labels. Pick the type of label that you want. You can pick the manufacturer. You can pick the product number. If you buy a box of labels, this number is usually printed on them. I'll pick Next. Specify the font, the font size, the color. How do you want one label to look? I'll hit Next. Now you build a prototype label. What do you want a single label to look like? And then access copies it for all the rest of the data in your database. So for example, I would go first name then a space, I'll press the space bar on my keyboard, then last name, then enter. Now, normally here's where I'd put the address, the city, and the state, but we don't have all that. All we have is the state, then I'll press enter, and let's say the credit limit at the bottom. Maybe you're printing these out to go on name tags. But that's how you create your prototype label. Then hit next. Which fields would you like to sort by? Maybe last name. Next. What name would you like to give the report? Let's call this my customer labels R. And then finish. And it just generates your report for you. And there you go. There's your mailing labels. You can click to zoom in. When you're ready, you can print them by using the print button over here. You can change the size, the margins, all kinds of different settings in here. You can export this to Excel, to a text file, to a PDF send it via email, and lots more. When you're done, click the Close Print Preview, and it brings you back to your database. This is the Report Design View, which we're not going to mess with right now, so I'm just going to close that. If you want to tweak or modify this at all, you can make changes to it in here in Design View. So there are the four basic objects in your Access Database. Your tables to store the data, Queries to display the data however you want, as far as limiting the records or sorting it. Forms to work with data on the screen and make a nice pretty interface. And then reports to print information out. There are also other more advanced objects called macros and modules that I cover in my advanced classes. Now the important thing to note is all of this information is stored in one physical file on your hard drive. Mine is stored in C Users Rick Documents, Rick's database.accdb. It's an access database file. I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. I literally just scratched the surface of Microsoft Access. There's tons more that you can do to build a professional quality database in not a lot of time. Now, the next step for you is to take my Access Beginner 1 tutorial. You can find it on my website at accesslearningzone.com. And for everyone watching this video, my full Access Beginner 1 tutorial is absolutely free of charge. Look in the description text below the video window, and you'll find a link that you can click on 
that will take you to a free copy of my Access Beginner 1 lessons. It's over two and a half hours long, and it goes through everything that I covered now in a lot more detail, plus a whole lot more on how to build databases and access. Once again, it's completely free of charge. So visit my website right now and continue learning with accesslearningzone.com.